Tim, groin injecting seems to have become more prevalent in recent years. You've questioned whether it's moved from being a risk boundary to becoming almost an acceptable risk. Could you expand on that a little? Yes, um, it was probably about 12 years ago when we were first doing some qualitative work with injectors in London. Uh, the focus of the study wasn't femoral I injecting, to be honest. But in the context of that study, injectors were talking about where they would inject their drugs. At that point, it was our interpretation, looking at these accounts that injectors gave us, that the groin was considered to be, if you like, an end point, a place where, you know, you end up once having used all other veins um, in the arms, in the legs, uh, and, and so on. So that's why we interpreted this to be something of a risk boundary. It was talked about as the place where I end up. I only do my groin if I really have to, if I really have no choice. So it was seen to be a necessary thing rather than a choice by preference, if you like. Um, it was also, I think, often presented to us as a risk boundary in terms of the kind of health dangers, that this was a place of injection where injectors described as being a last resort also given the health risks or dangers associated with doing the groin. Some injectors having experienced missed groin hits, having hit arteries and having talked about the kind of intense pain and other health risks which can relate to that. So, yep, the groin was very much presented as a risk boundary, as a, as a, as a last place to inject uh, out of necessity. Since then, 10 years later, we've been doing qualitative interviews with injectors here in London and also in Bristol, again as part of other work. But it just struck us that injectors are talking about where they inject in their body slightly differently, with the main factor being that doing the groin is talked about as if it's far more acceptable now than let's say it was 10 years ago. So this is why we wonder whether in fact groin injecting is now considered to be more socially acceptable among injectors, um, if not just more normal, more people are doing it. We've at the same time been doing some quantitative survey work, which we've done anyway on a regular basis um, every year or every other year or so among injectors both in London and also in other sites uh, in, in England, uh, in five or six sites in England. And we can see looking at these data also that the prevalence of groin injecting has increased among injecting drug users in, in England. So looking at that data, which was collected in 2004 among almost 1,000 injectors in six cities, we find that it's around 40% of injectors that are using their groin in the last four weeks as their main injecting site. Now, that kind of implies that injecting the groin is, is fairly normal, is almost normative practice among injectors. So again, this might imply a shift towards the groin as a regular place of injecting. That's an average across all the sites, that 40 That's an average across all the sites. I mean, it's worth bearing in mind that some sites show higher prevalence of groin injecting among injectors than, than other. And, for example, that was the case in Bristol and Manchester. Drug workers sometimes talk about up to 80 and to 90% of injectors going in their groin, particularly when they're looking at specific client groups. Yes, I mean, the survey work we've got, we haven't looked at particular subgroups of injectors within these surveys. We've taken them as a, as a whole. Um, and as I said, in, I think it's in Bristol we found 58% prevalence of groin injecting in the multi-city survey we did in 2004. But we've just recently finished a survey um, using a slightly different method. So we may have recruited slightly different injectors. Uh, in Bristol, which we just completed earlier this year with the University of Bristol and Matthew Hickman, where we found around 40% of injectors doing the groin in the last month as their preferred or main in injecting site. So whether it's 40%, whether it's 58%, I don't know. Um, the question is it's high, or at least high enough, uh, to warrant some kind of attention in terms of harm reduction advice and so on. Whether that indicates a shift towards groin injecting compared to 10 years ago in survey terms, I don't know, because unfortunately in the UK, we weren't very good at asking questions to injectors in our surveys as to where they injected on their body. So we don't really have a benchmark to compare that data against. 
That said, there is a survey which was undertaken over a little more than 500 injectors in Glasgow by, um, uh, by the Scottish team doing work as part of the World Health Organization multi-city study of drug injecting in 1994, which shows that 40% of injectors use their groin as their main injecting site in the last four weeks. So that's a similar kind of prevalence. So it's a little open to debate whether a shift has occurred uh, or whether it's always been like that. Um, but my judgment is that looking at the qualitative data, people are talking about the groin as an injecting site very differently now than they were, say, 10 years ago. As I say, where it's talked about as being far more normal, far more socially acceptable in a way, to do the groin um, than it was 10 years ago. So what are the factors that might have led to that perceived increase? Um, the first thing that should be said, I mean, the bulk of the qualitative work we're doing is among speedball users or snowball users. Um, that is, people that are doing heroin and crack together in the same injection. So it may well be that crack has some uh, relation here in terms of whether it speeds up the deterioration of veins, for example. A lot of users are saying this is, this is one of the reasons why their veins are deteriorating quicker, either because of the increased citric, which is going into the injection as it's prepared, or the effect that crack is having itself, either as an anaesthetic on the injection site, which is causing missed hits, because users can't really know if the hit or the needle is actually in the vein until they feel the effects of the drug because the actual injection site is anaesthetized. Uh, another kind of user account is that um, crack isn't breaking down so well. So when you do get a missed hit or even a slight, slight missed hit, um, it can go lumpy or reform. So what we're hearing is that people's injection sites are deteriorating a lot quicker than they would have done if they were just doing good heroin only. Now, I don't know whether medically that is the case or not, but that's certainly one reason we're hearing from, from users of Presumably. crack that we're, that we're interviewing. Presumably there'd be increased frequency if people are injecting cocaine. I think that could well be a factor, for sure. The more, the more you're injecting, for sure, the quicker your veins are likely to deteriorate, particularly if you've got that additional factor of um, potential for missed hits through the site being anaesthetised. But, I mean, of the qualitative... In people in the qualitative study that, that we've interviewed that are doing speedball, heroin and crack together, they're on average injecting three times a day. So it's not as if they're injecting a whole lot more frequently than, um, than heroin-only injectors, to, to be honest. Uh, and these are largely people that are doing the groin as their main injecting site at the moment. So that's one, that's one factor. Um, there's multiple kind of other rationale which we're hearing, all of which is quite sensible from the perspective of an injector. Um, the first one, obviously, is, well, I have nowhere else to go. So that still features as, as a reason for doing the groin. Um, you know, I have no choice. I'm forced into the position of doing my groin. I'd rather not. I'm aware of the risks. In fact, most injectors we spoke to are aware of the risks and do perceive it to be risky, uh, even despite rationalising um, the need to do it. So that's still a, still a main reason, that they've run out of other veins and there's still certain veins they won't try um, and often the neck is cited as one of those. So you still get accounts which say, well, the, the groin is you know, one of my last resorts and I've ended up here having to do it. But we're also finding people doing the groin by preference, um, which I think relates to this idea that it's become more acceptable. It's become less of an issue to see other people doing the groin or to do it yourself. 